Hi, this is Nir from Polypop Live, and in this video we're gonna talk about transitions. We'll see how to add a luma fade transition like this, or like this. I'm gonna show you how to add singer transitions, like this, or like this. We'll also talk about twin transition, which is my favorite, and it looks like this. Also the classic cross fade and the color flash. So let's get to it. The first thing we'll need to do in order to add a transition to our project is to click on the plus button here in the scene layout. Once the window is open, we will choose the transitions option from the categories. There are many preset transitions we can choose from, but let's start with the basics. Let's add a transition element to our project. And we can do that by double clicking it or click on the add button here. We can see that Polypop added two new layers to our scene layout. The very top one is a global scene. The global scene is a scene Polypop renders on top of our project, no matter which scene is active at the moment. So if we place an object or an alert in this scene, Polypop will show it in all scenes. This is also where we can locate our transition layers. And indeed we can see that now we have a transition layer inside our global scene. Now let's look at the default properties of the transition element layer. The default transition style is color flash. The time is 250 milliseconds and the color is white. Let's switch between the scenes to see how the color flash transition looks and it's pretty straightforward. Of course we can change the properties of the transition. Let's change the time to 1000 milliseconds which is 1 second and choose a different color. And we can see the change when we switch the scenes. Now let's switch to a different style. Let's click on the style drop down menu and choose cross fade. There is now a cross fade transition between the scenes and I can change the time of it. So let's make it really short. This is 200 milliseconds. It works. Our third option in the style drop down menu is luma fade. We can see that because we started with a color flash and switched to the luma fade, Polypop tells me there is no source in the matte texture. If I want to import my own texture, I can click on the pick button and do that. But because Polypop has a lot of pre-made textures, let's delete the transition layer and bring a new one from our library. Make sure the transition layer is selected and click the minus button. Now again, let's click on the plus button here in the scene layout and choose one of the preset luma fade transitions. These are the black and white icons. Let's choose the circle one option and this is what it looks like. Here again in the properties we can change the time, make it slower or faster, we can change the texture, we can change the softness, changing it to 0 will do that, and changing the softness value to 100 will look like this. In the properties I can also invert the effect, so if before I make it on it will look like this, the circle goes from the inside out. Once I make it active, the transitions animation is inverted. And if we want to bring another luma fade transition, we will again click on the plus button in the scene layout, choose a different black and white option. I'm going to choose net one this time. And going between scenes will show us it looks like this. Here we can see that the two luma fade transitions we added appear inside a global scene. But because Polypop allows for only one active transition per project, the second transition is not active. Only the active transition has a play icon on its layer, and the rest will have a pause icon. We can make an inactive transition active by clicking on its pause icon. Now let's check the Stinger transition. Let's click on the plus button in the scene layout to open the window. There are plenty Stingers to choose from. The Stingers are the colored icon, and I'm gonna randomly pick Circles 1. Click Add. Looking at the global scene will show us that the active transition is the Circles 1. Switching between the scenes will show us what it looks like. Let's try another one. Again, clicking on the plus button, choose another Stinger and switch between the scenes. If we look at the Stinger properties, we can see there's an option to import our own video Stinger. If we import our own video, we can change the cut time, which is the exact time you want the scenes to switch behind the video. Now let's check the twin transition. 
You probably know the drill by now. Click on the plus button in the scene layout, open the window, double click on the twin icon, and there we go. Let's check it out. In this transition style, Polypop smoothly animates the transform data and properties of layers with the same name presets in both scenes. Which basically means that if you copy an object and paste it in a different scene and move it around, Polypop will animate the change. So let's check it out. Because I'm using the same objects, I can twin between them. So let's make some changes so you can better understand how it works. Let's choose my camera box, expand transform, and flip it around. Now because I flipped its position, Polypop will animate this flip between the scenes. This applies to many properties, like color for example. So if I'll change the color of the 3D text in this scene, Polypop will create a smooth color transition. Don't forget these are just two examples, there are many more properties you can play around with. And also remember that these changes apply to both 2D and 3D layers. Personally, I think this is a really great transition, because once you get the hang of it, you can create really interesting effects. So this is it, you now saw the 5 transition styles Polypop has to offer. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.